This lesson is going to go over writing rules for input output tables and graphs. So when we're talking about the rules, we're looking for a formula. And yesterday we talked about using an algebraic equation to show the rule for additive and multiplicative patterns. So what you need to remember when we move into this next part here is a lot of these are going to give you a graph. There are some things you need to remember about these graphs. I'm not going to draw all the grid lines, but there are some things you need to remember. We're going to talk about them throughout the chapter. This point right here is 0, 0. This is the starting point for all of these coordinate grids, and this is called the origin. Along this, line here, this is your x axis, and this one is your y axis. I always remember like if you drew it up like this, I could make a big y with your y axis. So you need to remember this is your y axis, this is your x axis. So this part is going to be your input and your coordinate, and this is going to be your output. I used to live in a house that had a horrible front door, and I always told this story to my former classes about how I would get locked out of the house, and then my kids would be inside playing Xbox and Nerf Gun Wars and doing what they're doing, playing on their tablets, and I would be locked out, okay? So if you think about the output is locked outside, and my kids are inside eating all my food and having a grand old time doing whatever they want. So my kids are in the house and I'm locked out. I shouldn't be smiling really, but I kind of got used to it after a while. Um, so that's just a little trick to help you remember your outputs on the outside. Your input is this X axis. And this is your horizontal axis and this is your vertical axis, but we'll go over that more in the future. So sometimes you're going to get a graph that's going to give you the points and sometimes you're going to get one, let's say we have one like this, it says C and D and it has these points here. So when I'm evaluating these input output tables, sometimes they change up the letters, but this is always X and this is always Y. If I'm writing coordinates, this is 0, 0. This is 1, 3. This is 2, 6. This is 3, 9. Your X is always going to come before your Y, just like when you sing the ABCs, W, X, Y and Z, X always comes before Y, so that's a little trick to help you remember. Um, so these are called your coordinates. Coordinates are always going to be X and then Y, and they help you plot the points on your graph or help you label points on your graph. So if on this graph here, I had a dot right here, I'm over 2 and up one, two, three, four, I'm going to plot the coordinate as two, four, because X is always before Y. So your coordinates help you plot. Sometimes they're going to want the coordinate, sometimes they're going to want a graph, and sometimes they're going to want you to write a rule for your graph, and you're going to have to ask yourself, okay, zero, zero, one, three, two, six, three, nine. It's really simple to see that it's a multiplicative rule. Multiplicative rules always have 0, 0 in the, in the table or on the graph because 0 times any number is 0. So this is um, a way to tell if it's multiplicative. Multiplicative, it's a long word to write out, but multiplicative graphs always start at the origin, 0, 0. Additive ones, do not. You cannot have an additive graph that has 0, 0. So in this one, I have to ask, what am I doing to C to get D? 
Well, it's pretty simple here. One, three, two, six. Each time I'm multiplying times three. So my rule is three times C equals D. Could I also write D equals three times C? Yes, they mean exactly the same thing. Sometimes your answer choices are gonna have the coefficient in the front and sometimes they're gonna have it on the back. It doesn't matter, they're the same. So be careful on those. Just to show you an example here, and we're gonna work through this together. I'm gonna show you an example on this first one. When I have a graph without a table, my number one rule is to make the table. It has input A and output B. I'm still seeing X and Y, but for this, they want you to write with the variables A and B, so I'm gonna play along A and B. Remember, A will be first and B will be second. If it asks for coordinates, you need to watch out for that. And so now I'm gonna fill in my little chart. I went over one, up five. See how it's halfway between four and six? You've gotta watch what the scale is on the side, two, four, six. So halfway in between is gonna be five. So I have one, five, I have two, six, I have three, seven. I can already tell this is not gonna be one times five is five, two times five is six. That makes no sense. This is gonna be an additive. And do you see how it goes to this point over here? I know if I plotted out zero right here, it would be on the y-axis and it would go this way. So I can see that this is an additive pattern because they're adding four each time. So to write the rule, I'm gonna write A plus four equals B and on this one, they want you to actually write that it's additive. And you'll see when you have an additive, the dots are usually really close together. On the multiplicative ones, they're really spread out. So even by looking at this page, I can see the multiplicative ones um, really easily. With this one, I, I would plot it out just to make sure because it's really close to being um, over here, um, I'd have to look at the numbers and make sure I understood this scale. So for all of these that we do, you have to make a graph or a table if there's not one. And then your formula is always going to show X plus or something plus or multiplied by something equals your Y. And they're going to substitute different letters for those. So don't forget that along the way.